Today, we're pitting Trader Joe's against Dollar Tree. Today we're answering the question, does it actually matter where you buy your groceries and how much money you spend on them? Cause listen, I lost a lot of money to Dogecoin, to the moon was a lie. So today we're gonna take ingredients from Dollar Tree and ingredients from Trader Joe's and we are gonna transform them into beef and broccoli and fried rice, a meal that I make a whole lot at home with simple hearty ingredients. And then we're going to have a judge blind taste test them to see if they can tell which grocery store they came from and which they prefer. So. Without more preamble about how much I lost on crypto, no, for being honest, I really wanted all crypto to fail because I didn't put any money into it. And if I saw my bum friends from high school get rich off crypto, I would have been so mad. All right, so the first time we cooked with Dollar Tree ingredients, uh, one, a lot of y'all in the comments seemed super stoked, which made me feel really good uh, because Dollar Tree does provide a lot of cheap food to a whole lot of people. And that is exemplified right here with our beef and broccoli and fried rice groceries. At Trader Joe's, we spent about 51 bucks. And then at Dollar Tree, we spent about $19 on the total groceries. As far as a per dish basis goes, it is $6.31 on the Dollar Tree side, and then $17.50 for the whole dish on the Trader Joe's side. I mean, that's literally three times more expensive. I continue to be impressed with the amount of selection that Dollar Tree has. The biggest differences that we're going to see here, of course, are the grass-fed ribeye steak that we're using for the beef and broccoli from Trader Joe's. They have cheaper beef options, but we went there and we couldn't find, they used to have that shaved beef, you know what I mean? They just called it like shaved beef. They didn't have it at any of the stores we went to, which is a bummer, because that was a great product and I used to use it for Philly cheesesteaks. Speaking of Philly cheesesteaks, steak them. I love steak them. And listen, everyone's like, nah, it's processed and frozen. I made the very bold claim that 95% of people's homemade cheesesteaks would be better using Steak'em than trying to slice up their own steak because the only ingredients in Steak'em are uh, beef. <clears throat> Listen, this might just come in frozen thin sheets, but it is just pure beef that's you know probably held together with some stuff, uh, but whatever. I really like it, and I think when you're combining it with vegetables like broccoli and a bunch of sauce that we're making with soy sauce, various garlic powders, onion powders, black pepper, stuff like that, uh, I think it's just gonna do really well and it's gonna be really nice and tender because that to me is what I want when I get Chinese beef and broccoli. I'm not looking for like the most pristine steak. I'm looking for delicious saucy meat. So literally everything from Trader Joe's was more expensive than Dollar Tree except the soy sauce was slightly more expensive and so was the flour. That makes sense due to economies of scale. But I mean really everything on this side of the aisle was cheaper than everything over here. So I think we should probably get cooking. Fried rice is one of my favorite things to make at home. It is super, super simple. And also it can stretch a lot of cheap ingredients to go a long ways. Eggs, the world has run on eggs. Christian, we just had this conversation the other day. I eat like five eggs a day. Uh, the world literally has run on eggs as a cheap form of protein. And you're stretching out rice with eggs, with oil, just getting more delicious, filling, nutritious calories in there. Uh, and you can season it up with whatever you like. It's a great way to get kids or adults who don't like vegetables to eat those. Just put the eggs back in a bowl, Josh. Just figure it out. It's not that hard. I'm gonna light these pans at the same time. There we go. We did a Myth Munchers episode on fried rice. Um, and with all due apologies to Mr. Nigel Ung, AKA Uncle Roger, we are not using a wok because a lot of people at home probably don't have woks. Uh, I don't even have a burner at home that could like feasibly use a wok. So we're using saute pans, which like that'll get you about 87% is good, and B pluses, my God, if I had B pluses in college, I probably would've been working somewhere a lot more boring, if I'm being honest. Uh, the eggs at Trader Joe's were a fair bit more expensive. The eggs there, they look about the same. Listen, most eggs, unless you're buying like the real, real expensive stuff, like they, they, you can only raise chickens so cheap, you know what I mean? Like the, they're chickens, it's coming from a hole. The big one too, cloacas. Google, just here, while, while I'm whisking the eggs, Google all the functions of a chicken's cloaca. And you'll come back and be like, all that from one hole? We're gonna scramble this up. If I remember my Myth Muncher's training correctly, that's good. Resist the urge, just eat these straight out of the pan. You wanna break these up into like really small curds, uh, but also you're gonna be tossing and sauteing literally everything. I see why the robots have an advantage over us now, you know? The fact that I can't even do this feasibly with two hands, like they have an infinite amount of arms. Vegetables, mixed vegetables. We couldn't find exactly the right mixed vegetables. This is throwing in a bit of a weird variable, but like, you know, uh, any little vegetable bits you add to your fried rice are likely to make it taste better. So we're adding those. We got green beans, corn, peas, carrots over here. On the Trader Joe's side, on the Dollar Tree side, we got mostly bell pepper and onion going on, which like, that's smelling nice and fragrant. 
Uh, jasmine rice, cook these the same. Well, let's just, ah. Um. No, they're the same rice, dude. Like you can only do so much with rice. I'm gonna give it a toss. And then we're actually gonna let it try and coat the bottom of the pan and create uh, a, what's called a fond, which is like a nice caramelization and crust forms at the bottom. I just, dude, I do that in my own kitchen. It's so bad. God. Okay, cool, cool, cool. We'll both the toss. Neglect the left hand, just like Jalen Brown. <laughs> ha! Got him! Take that, Celtics! Take that, Boston, with your Ben Affleck and your ice spice! Uh, cool, we're gonna let this uh, toss, coat, cook for about two minutes, let it form a crust, check back, we're gonna finish it up. Uh, soy sauce is the next ingredient. Something I found really interesting. Yeah, soy sauces. At the... At the Dollar Tree, we found premium light soy sauce from Heinz, which I did not know they made this product. Looking at the ingredients on this is really fascinating because it says water, soybean, yada, yada. But uh, then it says salt, sugar, wheat flour, yeast extract, and then flavor enhancer, which I didn't think was legal to put on food menus anymore. I looked as if you guys would know. I didn't know it was legal to put on food menus anymore. If I had to guess, it's MSG. I'm gonna just taste a little, taste a little tasty taste. But I thought you had to specifically label MSG. No, but again, MSG is not bad. It just makes your food taste good. It coats the tongue so nice. I forgot, no, it's already measured out so it can be consistent. Well, now I need to put in a little dash of the other one and I need to lick it off my palm too. Yeah, it's soy sauce, right? All right, my bad, my bad. Um, but really, I mean, that gives you such an extra pump for that MSG. We're gonna add. Both of those in. Guys, remember which pan is which. What, what do you mean? Because I need to saute this with my right hand. It's going back, it's going back. God, the, these people will turn on you so quickly. This one just looks more appetizing to me, but again, I think that's just the pops from the corn and whatnot. Um, but ultimately, this is gonna come down to a battle of flavor. We're gonna finish this up, get it plated, and then we're on to beef and broccoli. Hey, are you someone who believes in astrology, which is totally real, but also loves typing things into the internet? Well, go to spork.com to check out their ranking of which grocery store you are based on your astrological sign. If you're an Aquarius, you might be Trader Joe's. You're both fun, you're both quirky, you both have weird sexual tension at the checkout line. If you're a paladin or whatever, you might be Dollar Tree, because you're both holy and mighty in your swordsmanship, but also have the power of healing in large groups. <clears throat> I feel like I nailed that. All right, we're gonna add, we're making beef and broccoli. Um, typically in beef and broccoli, you would marinate the beef, you would probably velvet it in some cornstarch or something, um, but like, you, you don't always have to put in the extra effort, right? Like getting yourself fed, getting your family fed, that's what it's about. This is gonna be a delightful, big mixture of flavors, uh, not necessarily authentic to Chinese cookery, but hey, listen, it's gonna be tasty, and like, take, take the shortcuts where you can. You know, we're not passing this off as authentic, not like, the Panda Express or the P.F. Chang's. Uh, while the beef is sauteing, let's check out some other ingredients right here. The steak comes versus the beef, we've talked about that. This is actually, uh, I mean, a huge bummer for me on an existential level. Over here, we have these lovely large broccoli florets from Trader Joe's, and then the broccoli from Dollar Tree is 90% stem. So the stem that they literally cut off the broccoli that goes to the more expensive grocery stores now goes to the more low income facing grocery stores. When I grew up as a kid, I thought I hated vegetables because fresh vegetables are one of the foods that are least accessible to low income people. And I thought I hated vegetables because of stuff like this. Um, that's a huge bummer and just a general policy issue. So uh, I don't know, support good charities like No Kid Hungry and whatnot. Uh, so we're gonna saute this beef up. Let me grand, I get to grandstand for a little bit. You know, put me on the soapbox. I don't wanna break the steakums up too much. I wanna leave like a little bit of texture, and let this heat up, and then we're adding, typically oyster sauce would be in beef and broccoli. I make that a lot at home, just kinda of go rough and quick with it. Um, but we didn't have any oyster sauce there. We're gonna add a little bit of sugar, just to add that like, a lot of Chinese American dishes. A lot of the reason people love Chinese American food is because there is that sweet, savory interplay with meat and sugar. So not a traditional, authentic recipe, but we're gonna drop some of that brown sugar in there, and then we're gonna thicken it up with a little bit of flour slurry, because they ain't got no cornstarch either. This is about browned. I'm gonna get a little bit of color on this broccoli in there. I really, when I raise a child, I wanna do a weird social experiment with them where I only feed them plain boiled meats and hyper seasoned fried processed vegetables to flip the association in their mind. I'm gonna have that kid that's like, ew, hamburger's gross. I want cauliflower tots, 
slathered in ranch. And I go, yes, I have done it. Uh, garlic powder, a little bit of, what's the, what's the one that looks like black pepper called? Black pepper, okay. And then garlic powder, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm gonna build my I'm gonna build my sauce in the broccoli bowl because I decided that I want to do that. We're gonna add the flour, the sugar, beef broth, soy sauce. We're gonna whisk that up with chopsticks. That's gonna incorporate the damn it the flour clump. Shoot, mess that up. We're fine. Whisk through it. Whisk through it, baby. Into the pot, and now the flour is just gonna thicken all that stuff up. We're gonna test it for seasoning. We're gonna get this plated up along with the fried rice. Should be good to go. Jordan Meyer from Spork.com, the internet's premier destination for grocery store reviewing. Welcome. Hello. Uh, we have two dishes in front of you. We have beef and broccoli. I know, in this economy, <laughs> um, uh, one of them was made from ingredients from Dollar Tree and right. the other with ingredients from Trader Joe's. Okay. Please dig in, let me know what you think and uh, if, I don't know you th if you like approve of me as a person. I do approve of you as a person. Thank you. Um, I actually love you very much. Do you know that? Yeah, I, I love you very much. I, I really and we feel that. hang out a lot outside of work. Okay, we don't, but we have before. We want to. I know, and we want, we want to. to. More. We want to. We've hung out before, and it's gotten a little too wild, so we've had to yeah. bring it back. No, actually, yeah. It was, That's really happened. It was on a Monday in a parking lot. Um, okay, I already think this is the more expensive one. <laughs> Just upon looking at them, this has a darker, not darker, a um, more um, muted mm. tone. This is a little bit more vibrant, both in broccoli and in meat. This is Pleasantville before sex, Pleasantville after sex. A hundred percent. Is that a straight <laughs> thing? What is that? Oh, it's, a Toby, it's a Toby Maguire thing. Oh, God. the movie the Pleasantville. Pleasantville. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I think my camera's up there, so I'm like, Not hey. everything I do is a part of straight culture. I don't uh, know. Well, in a way it is, and that's okay. Um, Pleasantville, right, the movie with Toby Maguire. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Is he not big in the... In the queer community? No, I love him. He's my Spider-Man, oh, okay. honestly. Oh, they if you can believe that. That's controversial. Yeah, the flavors in the rice are very nice and muted. Or not muted. Why am I throwing that word around so much? <laughs> it happens. They're subtle. The broccoli is okay. Um, are you allowed to tell me if the broccolis are frozen? Uh, both broccolis are frozen, yes. You can tell, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. All right. It's nice. It's nice. This isn't my favorite dish in general, mm. but it's nice. Uh, this was a little bit of like a hacky recipe. Didn't make it like as authentic as it could have. Mostly sure. in an effort to one, save people time, and then two, uh, they didn't have you know oyster sauce, say at both stores or either store even. I love it, dude. Invest in oyster sauce. Mm -hmm. Very good. They got a sports recommendation for oyster sauce too. There you go. Yeah, that's a cheaper one. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can tell in the beef. Um, I hope at least. If not. That beef is so bad. Did you taste this? You don't like it? Did you taste it? Sorry, I'm eating. Well, okay. Uh, and then I'll sweet that one. It's really bad, both in texture and flavor. I can hear how spongy it is as you chew it. I love spongy beef. Oh, you I think, love spongy but beef. But that doesn't taste good, right? Like mm -hmm. you might like it, but it doesn't taste good. I, I don't know. I, I honestly think it tastes like, it tastes very processed, of course. Okay, yeah, it doesn't taste good. Everything about this one is better. So, uh, which one do you think is from Trader Joe's? I think yeah, this one yeah, is from okay, Trader Joe's. We knew Joe's. that, we knew that. We definitely knew that. And Jordan, what if I told you, holy smokes, you are right. That is from Trader Joe's, this is from Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree doesn't have a ton of fresh produce and meat, so we tried to do the best that we could. So the product in here is actually Steakums, which is 100% pure beef. Okay. And I really love Steakums, because they're super easy, they break up really well. Oh. They're great for cheesesteaks, maybe not the best application for beef and broccoli, but yeah. I do genuinely think that tastes good. That's interesting, yeah, I'm, I'm not that into it. I think it's probably an acquired taste. Um, that being said, the best one-to-one -one on these plates are the frozen broccoli. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I don't think there's like a huge difference well, between the two frozen broccoli. It's really funny, if you look, like there's a ton of just broccoli stem in here, because that's what came in the bag. And so like, it really bummed me out from a cookery perspective, but like, they don't taste bad. Okay, unfortunately, I like that. I like broccoli oh, stock. Broccoli I think stock. it's nice, I think it has a good flavor. So I kind of like that. To me, it feels like a little more, like they're giving you the whole thing. So for two portions of each of these, this one costs $6.31, this one costs $17.50. Obviously the big Ooh. price difference is coming from using a whole ass grass-fed steak versus using steak ums. Yeah, well, what I'll say is save your money on the broccoli. Go to Dollar Tree, get their frozen broccoli. I think this fried rice is delicious, so good job. Thank you, thank you, I try my best. Uh, Jordan, thank you so much thank for you. being a fair and impartial judge. I try. Um, but we'll, we'll hang out. 
soon. And it won't be in a parking lot and there won't be four locos involved. Uh, anyways, thank y'all so much for stopping by Mythical Kitchen. If you take anything away from this, um, phone your congressman. Seriously. Right? Subsidize fresh produce. Yeah. You know? And food deserts. Give people access to delicious food. They deserve it. God dang it. But also, great. Dollar Tree, you do great work. Trader Joe's, you do great work. Despite the fact that I don't like to eat mini quiches for dinner every night. Grocery stores are the new Zodiac signs. Find out what store you are at spork.com.